Hello everyone, Seraphin here. Welcome back for more of my new player's guide to Fire Emblem Heroes. When I last left you, we had just completed the prologue of the main story and unlocked a lot more stuff to do. And we're going to go through that today. So, now that we have the prologue finished, we now have a lot more options here on the story, men uh, story menu. But real quick, there's something else we need to go look at, and that is back over to the Allies menu. And take a look at Edit Teams real quick. Uh, we now have access to Alphonse as a hero, and Sharina. These are the other two main characters in the game, in addition to Anna. And there's no way to obtain additional copies of Anna, Alphonse, or Sharina. They are the only copies you get. Uh, they cannot be merged. They can, I think you can use dragon flowers on them, but you cannot merge them. So you'll only ever have one copy of them, unless the uh, designers of the game decide to change that later. But right now, there's only one copy of, every, of them, but everybody gets one for free. So we're actually going to go ahead and modify our main team here because I want to have Alphonse in the team and I want to have Sharina in the team. We're going to keep Takumi for the time being though because he's we just I like having an archer. So now we have one of each color and we have an archer, which is nice. It's a pretty decent keep team composition. And we're going to roll with that. So Alphonse is actually quite good in my opinion. He's probably the best of the three of the main characters if you think about it. That was certainly not the case when the game first came out. He was actually one of the worst ones. But anyway, so what does Alphonse do? He is a melee sword unit, which is kind of good. He's infantry, and he gets a healing skill as a special. So whenever he activates his special, he will restore 30% HP equal to how much damage he did. So if he did 10 damage, he would heal for 3 when his special activates, which is pretty nice. Keeps him alive longer. Uh, he, does have the, he does have quite good attack. Like, his attack's actually very high. I think it's like 35 when he's level 40, which is really good. And he's also he's not very fast though. His his HP ends up being some or his speed rather ends up being somewhere in like the mid 20s, which is not particularly fast. In fact, it's quite slow by today's standards. His defense though is also pretty solid. He's definitely good as a frontline unit. So I like Alphonse quite a bit. Uh, Sharina, on the other hand, is quite a bit faster than her brother. Uh, her attack's also good, but not quite as good as Alphonse. But she's a good deal faster, and she also still has pretty decent defenses. So. And we see she also comes with Rally Attack. So we are not losing out on that from having we're not having Ray in our team anymore. She still has it, which is kind of nice. And then, uh, obviously, Anna has Night Sky and a Silver Axe, all that fun jazz. So this is going to be our main t adventuring team for the story going forward, if I decide to play any more of that with you guys. Let's jump back to the battle menu. So we've got some new stuff. Uh, we can see the story maps is still here. There's still new stuff to do, hence the little red stamp there. Uh, we have the training tower on the bottom here. And what you do in the training tower, in addition to leveling up your units, giving them experience, giving them skill points, is you can earn shards and crystals and badges from here. This is the main way to acquire these currencies in the game, is doing the training tower. So you earn XP, you level up, you get shards, you get badges. This is, And when the game first came out, this was in fact the only way of obtaining these currencies apart from completing uh, quests on a regular basis. And what this is telling us here is there's actually a daily reward rotation. So uh, on the first clear, you'll get shards or crystals the first time each day. That's like a first time bonus. You also get crystals only from the sixth stratum and higher. So shards are the lower level ones, crystals are the higher or the better ones. And then badges, you also get a first time clear reward for badges, either a decent amount of regular badges or a smaller amount of great badges. And you only get great badges from sixth stratum or higher. So we start from the bottom here with this, with this training tower, obviously. Starting stratum is for level 1 units, generally speaking. Uh, the first stratum is for like 3 to 5, second is from like 7 to 10, third is like 12 to 15, and so on and so forth. They get progressively more difficult until you get to the top, where the 10th stratum is level 40. That's the maximum level. And we can see here the little symbols, just like on the stream maps, is what units we're going to encounter, or what weapon types they'll have, rather. We can see how much stamina it costs to start the training tower. The stamina requirement goes up and up and up until you get to the top, starting at the bottom, which is only one. The top, it's nine. And the really cool thing, this is another recent addition to this, is if we don't like the uh, weapon types that we're going to be going up against, potentially, we can actually cycle or refresh them. There's this little refresh button on top up here. And if we hit that, it actually rotates out the weapon types of the units that will be encountered in that map. 
you'll notice that there's actually some slight variation in the levels of the training towers themselves. So the levels themselves will adjust within a certain range. So they become either progressively more or less difficult. And this is actually kind of strange because me as a longtime player, you'll notice that every one of these maps has three units in it. But you can have as many as five, and I don't, I'm not sure what unlocks that ability, but I know for a fact that uh, some of these can have up to five units on them. Maybe it's because it's just new player thing, but I'm not sure. At any rate, uh, we'll go into this training tower some other time maybe, but that's just one thing to do. And we can actually see what kind of rewards we get from doing certain things with this little speech bubble over top of it. So we see here that we get shards, crystals, and badges. And because I'm recording this on a Sunday, it's actually... We get universal shards and crystals from completing the training tower today, and a random color of badges. That's what the question mark is. So either one of the four colors. I think on Tuesday, it's always red badges and red shards. Uh, Wednesday is blue, Thursday is green, Friday is transparent, and Saturday would be the yellow universal ones. I think it's the same for Sunday. Actually, as for Monday, I'm not sure. That's a good question, actually. It rotates out each day, though. If you play in the weekend, you're more likely to get random colors of shards and crystals and badges and things. So let's move over to the Colosseum real quick. This is where all of the PvP content is for the most part. And we see here that it, a, uh, a hero path ranking of 5 is required. Or not required, but advised. If we click on that, it says your current rank is 1. We recommend you level be level 5, but you can choose to circumvent that and just say try anyway and it'll never bug you about it again. We're gonna go ahead and try anyway. So here are the three PvP modes, well, three of the four, actually. This is their, These are the three that are available here. When this game first came out, it was just the arena. That's all it was. We're gonna go ahead and click on the arena, though. And what is the arena? This is a little weird. So this is the primary PvP mode in the game at the moment, I think. I guess a case can be that Aether Raids actually is, but we'll talk about this one first. So every week, there is a given, a given season is going on. So it says here, days left in season one. That is because the end of the season is Monday evening, as we talked about last or some other time. I'm recording this on a Sunday, so tomorrow is the last day of the season. There's one day left. Uh, these are the season's bonus heroes, are these ten right here. This means that if you ride into an arena battle with one of these bonus heroes, you will actually get double points. And so you want to do that as much as you can. Generally speaking, they will have the newest released units as part of the bonus season. That's what the top row is here. These guys on the top all came out very recently. We see also that the three main lords for uh, three houses are on here. There is a random legendary unit here. That would be legendary Hector right there. And either uh, Anna, Sharena, or Alphonse are always a bonus hero. One of the three of them always is. So no matter what, you will always have access to a bonus hero. Might not be the one you want, but one of the three of them is always going to be here. So put one of them on your team to raise your score. That's what that says. Now down here we see that there is a chain reward bonus here. Uh, if you manage to complete five arena battles in a row successfully without losing, you will gain each of these rewards in succession. So the first time you get 3,000 feathers. Second time you get 100 arena medals. Third time you get 10 sacred coins, fourth time you get an orb, and finally five in a row you get 10 refining stones. You want to try to get all in a row if you can, that's the best way to do it. If you fail, however, you can start right over again, it's not that big of a deal. You're not, you're not really out anything. And again, normally you would only have the ability to do three per day because of these dueling swords. Because every time you initiate an arena battle, you, lo you lose one sword. But if you have a dueling crest, you can replenish all three swords whenever you want. Or you can just wait until the next day and it'll refresh all three of them. So on normally in a given day, you can only do three of these. But as long as you don't lose, your chain will be preserved. It's not going to reset the next day unless the end of the season happens. And then this number up here that currently says zero is our current arena score. Obviously, we haven't done any arena so it's level zero. And then right above that is our arena tier. They start at tier one, as you might imagine. And then there's just a random title here for your tier. But we can go ahead and take a look at our rewards at the bottom here. We're going to click on check rewards. So this is our tier rewards. If we stay in the current tier, which means we just stay at zero, means we don't go up a, we don't go up a tier, we don't go down one. At the end of the season, we will get two divine codes and 100 feathers. That's honestly garbage. That's barely anything. If we manage to go up 
or rather, this is what this is our ranking overall. If we end up in this ranking, we won't go up a tier at all. If we end up in this ranking here, meaning the top 80% of people, we will go up one tier to tier two, and we will gain four divine codes and 200 feathers. If we're in the top 50%, we'll go up two tiers and get this stuff. And finally, if we are in the top 40% of players on the in this tier, we will go up three whole tiers to tier four and get all this stuff. Obviously, the higher tier you are, the more stuff you get. Uh, the highest tier to earn in the arena is tier 20. So if you make it to tier 20, that's awesome. There technically is a tier 21, but that's for like the most uber elite players. That's where you get those crowns from. And I'm going to be completely honest with you, I've never made it there. So your mileage may vary. If you're really good at the game, you put a lot of time and investment into it, you might make it, but entirely up to you. You might get lucky. You get pretty lucky too, to be completely honest with you. But most of the time, the only people who make it to tier 21 are like people who spend a lot of money on the game, and they are quote unquote whales. It's literally pay to win in some cases in this game, unfortunately. But thankfully, unless you're in those really super high tiers, it won't directly affect you at all. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. So currently, our rank in tier is unranked because we haven't done anything. But after we do our arena runs, we can actually come in here and look and see what our rank in the tier is. And it will highlight one of these four reward tiers to see what we're going to get if we stay at that rank at the end of the season. The end of the season is when this rank is calculated. So this is what you're looking at at any given moment is not accurate of the ending. Because a lot of players come in at the very last minute to do their runs. And they can end up pushing you down or pushing you up, as it were, depending on how it goes. So that's our score. That's our reward type for is for our tier. We also have a defense reward. So what happens is you have a set team out of your available teams. That is your defense team. That's what that one that lets put the one with the little shield next to it. This little guy here. So at the end of the season, if you if your team has successfully defended itself against another player, then your defense ranking will go up. So if you've got a really good team that's really good at defending themselves, then your defense score will be higher. You'll get some extra feathers for that. That's pretty much it. That's the arena for the most part. We can see our defense results here too. So if our defense team had been fought against by somebody else, we can come in here to see the result of that battle if we won or lost. But right now, obviously our team hasn't fought anybody because we've only been playing for like a week and nothing has happened yet. Don't worry about it if you don't get battled against. It's not that big of a deal, honestly. And then when we go to do an arena battle, by the way, you have the option of three different difficulties. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and pop that open right now just so you can see. It's going to redeem one dueling sword, but who cares? I'm not actually going to do it. We're going to go ahead and proceed. So you have the option of fighting a beginner enemy, uh, an intermediate difficulty enemy, or an advanced tier enemy. And it tells you their tier on the side here. This beginner guy, strangely enough, is tier 4, but the total score we will earn from beating him is between 273 to 390, which is not super high. The tier 1 guy intermediate will get either between 306 or 438 score, and the advanced guy will get between 315 and 450. Your total score is based on how many of your units are defeated during the battle. So if you completely clear out the enemy team and none of your guys die, you will get the maximum score. If only one of your guys survives, you'll get the minimum one. And obviously, if all of your guys are defeated, you lose, and that breaks your chain, and you're going to start over. So we're gonna have to do, we're not going to do this right now, but we're just going to go ahead and hit Surrender to give up, and we'll try again some other time, maybe. Now, even, if, even though I didn't battle, it did use up one of my dueling swords, but again, I don't care. So if you're going to go into the arena, make sure you keep an eye on how many swords you got, if you actually care about that, or if you don't have any dueling crests to replenish them. Because they do go away even if you lose or even if you surrender. That's the arena. Uh, there is also a mode called Arena Assault. This one's a little more advanced. I wouldn't recommend coming here until you're quite a bit further in the game. And what this means is you're basically what you're doing is you're fighting arena battles. But there's up to a 7 streak in a row. And you actually don't have a break in between. And the other really weird thing about this is you have to use seven different teams. There is not any bonus heroes for this. You need to have seven different teams of four heroes each to do this if you want to get to the seven streak. If you manage to beat all seven in a row with your seven different teams, you will earn a boatload of points and you will earn various rewards. That's what these little items are here. These are items that are exclusively used in Arena Assault. They are used nowhere else. 
And there's some neat stuff like this special blade in immediately charges all your specials for all your allies. Or infantry boots, all your allies now have plus one movement for the turn. So you earn these from doing the mode, but you also can only use them in this mode. And I think if you do a three streak, you get one item. If you do a five streak, you get two. If you do a seven streak, you get three. It might be that you get one for free no matter what. I'm not sure, actually. But I don't do this a whole great deal of a lot, but... One thing you can earn from doing this mode is refining stones and sacred coins. And in fact, this is one of the only game modes in the game that offers you sacred coins as a reward. There's very other, very few other ways to get these. And sacred, co sacred coins are really nice for leveling up your sacred seals, which we don't have any of yet. But again, one of the best ways to get them is from this mode. And we can see here our total ranking at the end of the season, depending on where we're at, is how many refining stones, how many coins, and how many feathers we will earn. And we can actually see our current standing right here. We are unranked. We've got participated, obviously. That's Arena Assault. That's just, again, this is very advanced because you want high-level heroes and you need a lot of them. So you're not going to be coming here till later in the game. Moving on to Allegiance Battles. This one's a little strange. I'm going to be completely honest. I don't quite get this one. But you take on vast armies with pair-up. And pair-up's a little weird. So what you're basically doing in this particular mode, you're building a team of four, but you also have an option to form a pair-up relationship. And pair-up means that you can actually... You, you see, we have no participating friends, because we have no friends on our list right now. But whoever you're... Any of your friends will have a unit in their first team slot and the far left slot. So in our case, it's Anna right now. So if you were to find me on your friends list, you'd see Anna next to my name because she's in team slot one in the far left slot. And any of your friends, you can see all of their, like, quote unquote, spokesperson units in here. And you could choose one of them to be your pair up partner. And that literally means that you can swap between your fourth slot and one of your friends' units at any time you want during the battle. That's the pair-up mechanic. Normally, you can only do that with a legendary hero in any other game mode, but in the Legion's battles, you can do it with anybody. It's kind of cool. And what you're doing in Arena... In, uh, not Arena Assault, holy smokes. What you're doing in Allegiance Legion's battles is you're just taking on an army of enemy units. I think there's a total of, like, 12 of them with your four plus your one pair-up partner. And if you succeed at that, you will gain points. You get a battle score. There's also a synergy bonus for however many friends you participate this with. There's a friend bonus. There's a quest bonus. I'm going to be totally honest with you guys. I don't do this mode very much. And I think I really just drop in here and fill this gauge up just to make sure. Quest bonus is how many times you completed the mode, basically. But the gauge also fills up for all of your friends that do it. So if you have a lot of friends that do this and you come in here and just do it once a week, you'll get the full rewards, really, honestly. It seems kind of weird, but... Uh, we can actually look at our rewards real quick. This is, There is a rank or a uh, score based on your ranking, a and a score based on your score. So I think the maximum score you can get in this is 950, or thereabouts, and that gives you a decent amount of feathers. But also your overall ranking will earn you legendary blessings of a given flavor. This is a fire blessing. And you also get dragon flowers, and this is one of the few ways to earn dragon flowers in the game. If you manage to get to this high of a ranking, that's 50 per week. That's a pretty decent chunk. But again, you're not earning that many, that many of these. But come in here and do this if you need something to do to earn more rewards. And try to fill this gauge up if you can. The higher your synergy bonus, the higher this, the, the quicker this fills up. And you can see the more friends you have, the bigger friend bonus you'll have. And because I have no friends, I really don't get any friend bonuses. Set sent proxy. What is that button down here? This means that you are determining what unit is available to your friends to use as a pair up partner. So I can pick any of my guys, not just my uh, first slot leftmost unit. I can pick anybody I want as my proxy, quote unquote. And then my current standing I can look at here. I'm obviously unranked because I haven't done it yet. That's Allegiance Battles. If you're looking for a more, uh, I guess, in depth explanation of how Arena Battles works, not arena battles, but allegiance battles. Uh, I would look for a quick primer online somewhere. Like I said, it's it, I really even when this came out, I didn't quite understand what it was, and to this day, I still don't fully understand how it works. But suffice to say, drop in here, do it a little bit when you've got a lot of friends, and get to fill this gauge up as quick as you can. We get the most benefits out of that. All right, so that's the Coliseum. 
And before we're done today, I want to show you something else too, because we did finish the, the prologue last time. We can now claim our rewards from rank one of the hero's path on the home screen here. So you'll see I've I've summoned a hero. Whoops, what's it doing? Oh, I already claimed it apparently. So I'll claim that last quest from the hero path here. And because I completed all four, we have now ranked up to level two. And I get a free five-star Reinhardt for completing level one. And Reinhardt's really, really good. Obviously, in the fact, I think he's one of the best units in the game still, even though he came out really, really early. And we get two free orbs for completing rank one. Now we advance to rank two. So my goals for rank two are to level up an ally. That probably isn't hard to do. Unless it means spending crystals to do it, or shards rather, to do it. Yeah, raise an ally's level under allies, ally growth, then level up. First, try leveling up Reinhardt. We'll do, yeah, don't worry about that. Clear book one, chapter one, one on normal. Clear book one, chapter three, or chapter one, three on normal, and summon a hero with heroic grails. And it gives you a bunch more grails. So those are the quests for current rank two for Hero's Path. That's that done. We can also go ahead and claim our quests, which is more orbs. Gotta love orbs. All right, so now you've seen the the main story and the Colosseum. Next time we will pick up with the paralogues, just so you can get a look at that, and I'll go through the rest of the stuff on this menu as well. So stay tuned for that. We'll take a look at that next time. So until then, thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, feel free to subscribe and leave a like on this video, and leave a comment if you have any questions. I will do my best to answer them. And until I see you next time, this has been Seraphin. Stay classy, internets.